case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. The saga began in 1934 when Congress endorsed a joint resolution permitting the president to prohibit the sale of arms to nations embroiled in conflicts. President Roosevelt seized upon this permission, promptly issuing an executive order to block arms sales. Not everyone complied, however. Curtis Wright Export Corp., a leading arms manufacturer, was accused of conspiring to violate both the joint resolution and the president's order by selling arms to Bolivia, a nation then undergoing internal turmoil. This controversial action catapulted the issue into the courts. The lower court made a mix of rulings, upholding some of the appellee's arguments while overruling others. Unhappy with those decisions, the government appealed the case to the Supreme Court. The nation's highest court, in an opinion by Justice Sutherland, sided firmly with the government. The court maintained that the federal government's powers in international affairs did not hang upon the affirmative grants of the Constitution. Congress, they contended, would be ill-advised to impose stringent standards for the president's actions in international relations. These activities often necessitate an agile response, discretion, even secrecy, unfettered by micromanagement from the legislative branch. Further, the court determined that the president's executive order was constitutional, contradicting the non-delegation doctrine which asserts that legislative power cannot be reassigned to the executive. The court saw the president's role in international affairs as intrinsic and rightful, not requiring continuous endorsement from Congress. In a final sweep, the court distinguished between the time a statute applies and the time it remains in force concluding that the joint resolution's enforcement was still in action despite the issuance of a second proclamation. The ruling marked a significant expansion of executive powers in international affairs, supporting the principle that the president alone has the authority to speak and act on behalf of the nation. Armed with this precedent, presidents since then have been able to exert broad authority in conducting the nation's foreign affairs. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.